How you doing there, Jonesy? This is Jonesy coming right back at you. Again, I had this awesome topic to talk about today, but it got pushed to the back of the line. Got an awesome call today from, excuse me, an email today from Kanisha in Medford, Oregon. Her question I felt was very good and it really deserves some attention. So the question was, questions you should ask your MA school. So she wants to know, Jonesy, I'm thinking about going to become a medical assistant, but what questions should I ask them? I thought this is this is important, you know, because I wish I had this back when I went to school. Someone here on video to tell me about the pitfalls, uh, the truth, some of the not so much truth, you know. Uh, you got to understand whether it's an MA school, a university, Harvard, doesn't matter, UW, University of Penn State, it doesn't matter what school it is. There's always going to be some, we call, I call it the 80-20. 80% 80 truth, 20% BS. They all do this because they're all recruiting. It's like when you go buy a car. 80% will be truth, 20% will be BS coming from that person's mouth. That's how it works. So her question is valid because she has some concerns. And so, uh, Keisha, I want to tell you about these. Uh, I want to answer some questions that I think are pertinent uh, for you when you go to these um, schools, whether you're talking to them via online, like Zoom, or in person, or on the phone, these are questions you want to ask and make sure you get the answers to. First question is, are you an accredited school? This is important. There is no middle ground there for this answer. They either are or they are not. There's nothing in between with that question, understand? When you're at a green light, at, uh, when you go to a green light, it's green, you go. Red light may stop, same thing. Are you an accredited school? Same thing. You should hear an acronym such as C-A-A-H-E-P. That's an accreditation uh, uh, body. Also, A-B-H-E-S, another accreditation body. Today, you guys can do your homework, though. I want you to look it up. C-A-A-H-E-P and a b h e s look those up those are crediting bodies they accredit trade schools throughout the nation okay so just check it out and do your homework but the answer to that question should be yes or no in the story second question tuition cost you guys know these things can range from the very least to the very expensive you've got to find a happy medium where you think <clears throat> via your research what an MA school should cost you, and you go from there. Now, if you're getting the cost that will equal to maybe a four-year uh, degree, that doesn't make any sense when the school, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Most MA schools are at the most a year, maybe a year and a quarter, but they should not go into this crazy astronomical range for payment of dues or tuition for your education. So, Make sure you check that out and make sure you ask the question. Number three is, how long is this school? That's important. I've heard anywhere from four-month MAs to two-year AA degree MAs, somewhere in there. Now, you guys want to, again, check it out. Do a little bit of research. How short is too short? Is four months really going to qualify you to go out there and job it hard? Probably not. Um, the most I usually hear about is nine months and more, okay? So you want to make sure... You're getting the time in school so you can get the experience from the school to help you go out there and be the best that you can be, okay? A, number, a fourth question you want to ask for sure is what percentage of your medical assistants pass the CCMA exam? This is telling for any school, any university, any teaching facility. If more than 75% of their graduates pass the exam, like a law school, if more than 75% of their, their graduates pass the law bar, get, get their, uh, become an attorney, that's a pretty good measure of success. Same thing with most fields. You're looking at anywhere from 70 to 75% of graduates of any school should pass these tests that qualifies them to be or not to be. Same thing with your school. If, they, if you ask them what is the percentage of passing of your MAs who come through your institution, take the CCMA, 
what is the percentage of passing? The answer should always be about three quarters of the class that takes a test should pass. If it's less than that, you need to ask why, what happened or what's going on, you know? Those are valid questions because you might find yourself in that boat where you're going through that school, you graduate from your MA school, now you gotta take your CCMA and you find yourself not ready for the test because you weren't prepared for it via the curriculum, understand? So it might not always be your fault that you didn't pass that test. Maybe you were not prepared properly for it. Thus, the question you ask before you sign your name on the dotted line, how many of the MAs have passed the CCMA that come through your course? It's a perfect question. Very important question here, you guys. Externship. Do you help us to get an externship? And externships are very important. So you go through school, you sweat, you just hustle, you, you kick butt in school, get, get great grades, you know, you graduate from the MA school. The next step, you have to get hands-on experience, right? Well, you get that through the externship. Some schools don't, don't offer you any help with externships, and they tell you that right from the beginning. We don't offer any help. Now, many schools do offer help with externships, and they say that as well. Okay, so, your question, do you have externships here, and do you help? Yes, well, we do have externships here, and we do help. What percentage of your MAs get externship jobs through your assistance? That's an important question, guys. It's very important. If they come out and tell you only 30% lend an externship through our school to the externship sites, that's going to be a problem. If, they, if the answer was, we have about 75% of our students lend an externship or higher, Land and externship, that's good. That's what you want to hear. No school can grant 100% externship landing. It's impossible. But again, 75, 80%, that's okay. That's what you want to have them be able to answer you and to show proof. Understand? There should be a simple graph you can look at. They can show you, and there we go, and you are done. And there, that's all you got to worry about. Another big question. Okay, great. So you, they help you out with your externship. You do your three months, four months, whatever time they say to do. So you're there. You did your school. You did your externship, right? The question you want to ask them next is, do you help with career placement? This is so important, guys. Listen carefully. Maybe they don't do externships to help you out with it. That's fine. You have to make sure they help you with career placement. That's so important. And here's the reason why. Every MA school, right? If you're graduating students every nine months, right? So let's do four years. Nine months, nine months, nine months, nine months, right? That's 36 months already gone by. That's that's a class, four classes already, plus a, let's say we'll say one more class. So five classes, okay? Graduating, say 20 people in each class, right? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 100 people in four years, maybe a little more than four years, going out into the community looking for work. That's a lot, understand? If graduating MAs do not wish to travel further than 20 miles from their house, you're going to have what we call the oversaturation effect, where you have too many MAs who are graduated who don't get jobs because why? There aren't that many clinics to support that many graduating MAs. A lot of schools don't tell you that. I'm telling you this. You have to be able and be willing to travel outside of your area of comfort of traveling, maybe 25 miles to get to a job because these schools are churning out good people for sure, but they're all going to the same city and thus you're having an oversaturation of medical assistance in that area. Thus, I'd say to you again, ask them, do they help you with career landing? Do they help you find a job after you graduate? Very important, guys. I'm not sure who else is telling you this out there, but I'm telling you this. Make sure you ask that question. It's very important. Another biggie, financial aid. 
I don't know about you guys, but I don't have a couple thousand bucks just sitting in my pocket for this, for this, for this, for that. Ask them about financial aid. Understand? It's very important. Ask them how. Subsidized or unsubsidized? Those are things you want to learn about. Listen to me again and write this down and ask about it. Subsidized and unsubsidized. I'll do a video about this in the future, but for now, if you think about going to school, you need to ask this question of your of the people there. How are how is education financed? And ask subsidized or unsubsidized, okay? Another huge one you guys have to find out. Are the instructors real world qualified, right? Because a lot of times, as I learned when I was in university, some of my professors never had any real world experience. But they're teaching me about the real world. It doesn't make any sense, correct? It's important your MA instructor have some actual on the job, out there in the world experience because not only can they teach you about A and P, which is fantastic, they can also teach you about the environment in the medical office, what it's like to deal with patients, the doctors, the nurses, whatever comes up, they can give you that experience. You want to have a real world instructor, so ask that question. It, are the instructors here all real world instructors? Oh, what does that mean? Have they had jobs besides this one here of teaching? Have they had actual paying jobs as MAs? That's what you want to ask, okay? It's very good. Last couple, we got two more guys, is a CMA training, <clears throat> CMA prep. Just ask them, do you guys give CMA prep? All that means, do they help you to prepare for the CCMA test? Some do and some don't, but it's a good question to ask. And also, too, you want to say, do you, last question is, do you offer hands-on training? You guys, this is important because a lot of schools are offering you online MA school. I don't know how this, how this can be because you have to have hands-on with a, with a patient, correct? With somebody, with, with a body to do over half your work, right? I mean, if you do an online School with the with the MA school, how are they going to learn about injections and and, and, and phlebotomy and EKGs and all of that stuff online? I think not. So you need to ask. Do you have hands-on training? Okay, <laughs> I know it's another long video, guys, but I'm doing this to make sure you look out for yourselves. These are the questions. If you're thinking about going into a medical assisting school, ask these questions. First, ask them all, because the more you ask, the better you'll be prepared for the school. I'll tell you this again. When I was an MA some years ago, I loved it. It was wonderful. But that's my experience. And I didn't even have anybody showing me these tips I'm giving you. I just kind of went out there, ho, oh, oh, ho, MA, <laughs> had no idea. But you, I'm trying to arm you guys with the information and the knowledge you should have before you sign up to become a medical assistant. Now, I tell you, for me, it was a great thing. I loved it, but, you know, that's just my experience. But to make sure you have a good experience, that's why I'm making these videos to help you out, to show you what to expect out there and what you should be asking about, okay? All right, Jonesies, please, any questions you have, as always, send me an email. I appreciate you reaching out to me, Keisha, in, in uh, Medford, Oregon. I really do. For the rest of you, please comment and subscribe. I really appreciate you subscribing to this channel. Let's make it grow. Let's get informed out there, okay? You guys are awesome. Thanks a lot. This is Jonesy here. Take care.